Okay, uh, just wanted to make a quick video on how uh, ASM assembly level instructions, uh, or how this ASM statement in, you know, a GCC compatible compiler uh, would work, like GCC or CLang or Clang. Um, I've got, you know, an example of this being used in OpenBSD's source code right here. Um, and then the info page on how it all works over here. Um, as well as, you know, uh, the Intel manual on the specific instruction that we're doing um, over on a different desktop. But um, essentially, you can see sort of because this is a more complete example um, some of the stuff that I was trying to refer to in a previous video where we didn't need all of this fanciness um, this lock part you can basically ignore um, it's a lock prefix for locking uh, the bus to memory um, so that like if you have multiple processors you can't uh, like have two processors accessing the, accessing the same memory location uh, while this is going on um, which you need because this instruction is supposed to be an, an atomic instruction to like you know synchronize various things between in a multiprocessor environment whatever don't worry about it just pretend it's just this compare exchange long function Okay, so this what this says is run compare exchange long um, with the second operand over here as the source operand and the first operand over here as the destination operand. So uh, second, you know, it starts from zero. So the second is this R. So it's going to be stored in a register. Um, and it's gonna, you know, that register is going to have whatever value in had in has uh, before we run this, execute this instruction, um, and then we're going to pull the uh, output after all of this is done from the memory location um, and store that in whatever you know the pointer p points to. Um, it also says that you know we should store in in the EAX register before any of or or we should sorry we should pull in from the EAX register after all of this is over right after this instruction has been run um, and it says that we should store E in the EAX register before we execute this instruction. It also says that we should store P or whatever P points to in a memory location before all of this is run. Uh, but there's actually no guarantee that it's going to be the same memory location uh, that we pull um, the value from P or of P for from. It's not going to be. It's not necessarily the same memory location that we, you know, store into P when all of this is done. Um, and like the info page specifically warns against that. Um, so yeah, the constraint right. So really, this should say this should be one instead of being just an M to make sure that this uh, is in the same location as this one before all of this begins. Um, so I haven't talked about what this compare exchange long function actually does, um, but if you look at this uh, description in the Intel manual, um, compares the value in the EAX register, with the destination operand. 
So Intel syntax versus AT&T syntax has the destination and source operands switched. So they call it the first operand, but it's really the second operand, operand for us. So what that's going to do is, so E is going to be in the EAX register before this is run. And there's going to be something in this memory location right here. Um, the destination operand when all of this begins, it's not really specified. You know, that's why you should say that this needs to be, there needs to be a one here so that you can guarantee that P is going to uh, be in this, you know, the memory location referred to, or that it's going, P is going to be pulled from uh, when all of this is over, right? Um, so, yeah, only a number in the constraint can guarantee that one operand will be in the same place as another. The mere fact that foo is the value of both operands is not enough to guarantee that they will be in the same place in the generated assembler code. The following would not work reliably, right? Output r into a register foo, and then you also have an input r into a register foo. This doesn't work reliably. Um, <laughs> so, yeah you need to make sure that uh, you tie your inputs to your outputs. Um, but presumably, you know, assuming things aren't too crazy, uh, this P will be in the same memory location that this one is pulled from. So we're gonna compare E with whatever P points to. And then if the two values are equal, the source operand is loaded into the destination operand. So what's in the source operand? 0, 1, 2, whatever n is. So if e and whatever p points to, presumably, are equal, uh, then we're going to put in in this location, right? Whatever this memory location is. Um, and then we're going to put um, then we're going to pull from A, from the AX register, which is what E was, in, right? This happens no matter what, like, is going on here, right? We're always going to pull in from EAX and return it. So really, we're just returning E, um, I believe. Otherwise, the destination operand is loaded into EAX register. So, okay, I was, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> if, so if E and P are equal, then we're going to move N uh, into P, essentially, um, and return E down here, right? Because we're pulling N from wherever A was, and we're returning that, okay? Now, if they're not equal, then the destination operand is loaded into EAX. Okay, so if E and P are not equal, we're going to load P into EAX and return, and then we're gonna pull in from EAX and return in. So um, if these two aren't equal, then essentially we're gonna return P. Um, it's kind of complicated, but maybe you like have a better idea of how all this works now. Um, like, I, this instruction is probably one of the best instructions for demonstrating how all of this works, because you get a little bit of everything that you can do with this like ASM volatile statement. Also, don't worry about these preceding underscores. They're just like an alternate notation for the ASM statement in case you want to have a variable called ASM or a function called ASM or something, just so you don't get naming conflicts. Um, yeah, like, um, you know, long story short, um, unless I'm like, unless there's some magic here that I don't understand because I don't know the context of this very well, I would think that you would want um, this to be a one instead of just an M, right? You want this to be in the same location that we're pulling uh, to fill the value of P, 
before this instruction is run, uh, not just any old memory location, right? Because you never reference zero, one, two, three, four. We never reference, you know, output operand four up here. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that was helpful. You know, obviously you need to have a sort of already have an understanding of assembly um, a little bit to understand this video, but I assume if you're, you know, watching this, you uh, probably do. So, you know, or at least you're willing to, to learn a little bit of assembly. Um, anyway, that's uh, how these ASM statements work. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.